G'day, welcome back. Just continuing on here with my uh, Black Op game. Now, one thing I'm going to say straight up on this one is this video here is going to be the one where I crash out and lose. Now, the reason that I'm saying that is that this game's difficulty scale just continues to escalate harder and harder. And I don't think that, that at the moment it's actually sustainable to get much further than where we currently are. So just while we're in a quick arm um, part here, I just want to read something that the developers wrote the other day just to give you an understanding of why I'm sort of conceding here. So they said, um, we'll rebalance unlock uh, will rebalance unlock all countries mode in one of the nearest updates. It would be possible to actually complete it, meaning it currently isn't. The problem is initially we made this mode to be highly competitive with continuously game harder gameplay. The primary result is the number of countries unlocked. However, this was not met as good as we planned. So now it's time to arrange this part of the game in accordance with your wishes. There'll still be a leaderboard. Um, those who built their transit networks most efficiently will obviously be top of those boards. So what that's saying is that at the moment, this actually isn't completable. And if you go look at the achievements, you can see that that's completely the case. Um, I just need to get a, a few more big planes on this one to stop Riga from collapsing. Or Warsaw as well. Um, so what you're now going to see is that with... Whatever I get next is going to cost me 24,000. If I survive, I'd say even the next uh, 15, 20 minutes, we're going to be paying about 40,000 per um, country. And so certainly the game isn't at a point where you can actually do it. And and I would even say to a point that it's not overly fun. Um, the, the big problem that this has now is that you just... All that you can do is survive. Um, you, I think the most fun, and I can even see this in the comments, is that talk of strategy of what way do you build around the world? How do you approach it? Do you build extremely long routes? Do you try and sort of channel like I said to one friend, do we, you actually just actively go for countries even though they haven't given them to you? Like, do I take India? Because I know there's going to be a lot of domestic travel, surely, like what China is. And is China just sort of dealing in these um like lots of domestic travel so i'm actually making a lot of money off that sort of inward travel that's where i think that this this game is really fun i think that certainly we want it to be a challenge but it's just um at the moment uh literally impossible uh yeah sorry i don't know if i finished the thought if you go look at the achievements to get um to unlock all countries is currently a 0, 0.0 percent achievement and to um, to unlock a hundred countries, which would put you at about what sixty percent of all countries or so, I think is a zero point one percent achievement. So certainly you would need your strategy absolutely refined. I think around at the moment we're probably around sixty six countries or so would be my guess of where we're currently at. All right. So what we want to do is just up some of these planes. But we do also need to address uh, Vietnam very soon. And luckily, they're not. That's not struggling too bad. These sort of bigger planes that I've got going to Riga are sort of cleaning out Warsaw. As long as Minsk can continue to shift the planes across for him, uh, it's not too bad. Minsk is starting to buckle there too. So let's give Minsk another bigger plane. You can see all of this, all these just small adjustments that we're doing. Um, we're, we're now basically almost at the mercy of, of having to address Vietnam nice and quick. We want to make sure that Warsaw does not collapse. Now that has gone, so I think that we might be okay. Even that guy leaving wasn't enough. Shame. Minsk should hopefully be clear once it 
tools away. Okay. Now, one of, the, one of the interesting exploit that you can, if you were attempting to just go for this at the moment, and what's the biggest score that you can get? You can see my current next country is Vietnam. Uh, and Hanoi, our new capital. Um, and I, what I am doing is I'm limiting the amount of planes that I am going to have on my, my routes here. Because I do need, I think I need every cent. So... One way that you can now play this is that you can go um, basically look at what you've currently got um, as your next country. You can go Bangladesh. I actually don't want to take out Bangladesh. That's too big. Say if they gave me the USA as my next country, I don't want that. There is no actual path. Like this isn't a, a mapped path of what country you get next or even a sort of a logic to which one it does it. It's, it's purely random is based on the countries that are now bordering the countries you currently have, essentially. And so Bangladesh currently borders Myanmar down here, and so it's it's next up. But if I didn't want Bangladesh, what I could do is I could hit Escape, I could hit Save, I can hit Load, and I can load straight back into my game, and it will um, it will just be a different city. Like, the, the Load game will be completely changes every single time you, you reload. Now, hopefully, this big plane here is going to sort of help Warsaw out here and get, get completely out, because Riga's still got a fair bit there. Ho Chi Minh City. Oh, where are we? I don't think I realized that Ho Chi Minh City was so far south. I mean, is that where the, uh, the major, um, that famous sort of shot of the people escaping on the helicopter came from, right? So it's Ho Chi Minh. I assume it's because it's in the south because it's when the North Vietnamese won and they finally pushed all the way to the southern capital of Ho Chi Minh. Famously recreated in this, the Australian episode of The Simpsons. Which was a reference that I reckon I, I got decades after I knew it as a, as a thing from The Simpsons. So you can see we've now got four minutes to get to Bangladesh. Bangladesh is going to cost us 26,000. So I need to get another 10,000 in the next four minutes. Um, this is also where I think that even just something like that announcement that uh, we lost bags and someone's going to sue us is enough to just sink us at this point because we just basically have to sit on our hands, watch our network and go to working. That is so expensive, and if and like I don't know what the sort of the, the counter benefit would be to it if we actually do do it, but if it fails, like we're sunk. How are we gonna do this? There we go. Get in right, nice and close. Well, these three planes here are all too close together. That is definitely a sloppy design by me. Sometimes I try and hold and wait to, to have them separate, and other times I just click three times quick. Um, a lot of people have said in the comments the way that they would actually build is if they've only got a short route, instead of doing multiple planes like I do, they would just do one plane and upgrade at once. That a lot of these don't necessarily need as many planes as, as I use. Certainly now that I'm reaching this point where... I don't have the funds to do anything. Um, I can now completely sympathize that, that they might be onto something. But I think that even though this mode will probably be gone soon, they, they did say that you can continue to play this mode if you if you so wish. There's a They'll have a custom sort of challenge mode that you'll be able to uh, enter in your challenge into in, in which you would be able to create this. Um, but I think as long as this challenge exists, You've really got to have your strategy down pat as you come in, I think. Jakarta is quite a busy network here, so we're going to have to give some extra plane space to these guys. Because I think otherwise Jakarta will sink Myanmar. So we, assuming that this is, is going to be the last one of this series, um, 
the, the question really is what lessons have I learned from this? Now, one thing that I still stand by and I think is a great strategy is that domestic flights all bounce through the one city. I did have some people suggesting that you could make a web connecting all of your domestic ones together. Um, the, um, to sort of take care of it. But I think that... Um, let's double that. Um, I, I do still like this. Now, obviously, at this point, we're now extremely strapped for cash, which is a good justification to say why that's probably not a good strategy. But the other thing that, that I think is that if you think about how long I've spent not focusing on Europe um, in, this, in this game, you could certainly say that, like, well, it's survived. Unless there's, there's like, a particular show going on somewhere... Um, Berlin is fine. Berlin should be sort of really buckling with the amount of people that are moving through it, but all the major air um, sort of paths in have big planes on it. And that's basically the idea that I don't have to spend that much money on all these tiny routes. Say something like that, I could probably sell that plane there. Oh, it's Munich though, so probably, <laughs> probably that one didn't need it. Um, say that plane there, he's stuck behind someone else. Um, I didn't need as many planes as I've got on these routes. And what these are doing is that they're just sort of, uh, it's all working. There's there's no sort of problem in this route. The other, the other thought is that occasionally one of the problems comes that there's a, um, a sickness like the Ebola or um, sort of pigeons take out an airport. Generally, if anything's getting shut down, it's gonna be an individual city, which can obviously cause us a problem like it did when it was Bamako down here. But if it is multiple cities, it's going to be a country, that a country gets shut down. So if we've got a situation like, um, say, Germany gets shut down, none of these guys are going to be affected with needing um, extra routes. Now, again, this is something that's going to sink me, really, because I'm now going to have to take less money. Um, and I mean, we sort of we don't really have much of a choice there. Okay, luckily, because we got Bangladesh, we are just being given small route after small route. Now that we've got Gambia, which I assume will only be one city here, we will run him to Bamako. And we'll just go one plane for now. So I think part of the way that I did build was a bit more on the cautious side that I built um, Carter was still rather small there. Okay, so this guy is. I mean, how many can he hold? Will he clean that out? Needs one hit. It's it yeah. It's almost a bit more that you've got to just let it. Um, Uh, you've got to let it fail before you need to worry about putting more in. Now, be it, it's it's a very short notice that you generally get um, that anything's a problem. But you can see places like even Africa or even this guy here, I haven't had to spend that much money on yet. I think that part of that is that it, you need to know that how significant a city, um, a place is going to be. And there's no real way that, to know this in this game. Like, I mean... It's obviously suggesting that Africa is not big on um, on flights, but does that mean that that's based on population, or does it mean it's based on? Um, or is that just based on the amount that they that like real things say that that route gets flown? So, what I mean by that is. We'll say we've got Nigeria coming in next. Nigeria has a population of more than 200 million, but do we expect the population of Nigeria to actually fly around a lot? It's probably not something that's high up on their priority list. So uh, the United States, who has a population slightly bigger than that, do we expect them to fly around? Yes. So does this game look at it and just sort of say, well, these are, these are large cities, so people will fl are flying from them, and it's purely based on the population of a city, or is it based on the populations of flying countries like, say, China or America. And that's where this game becomes very murky and, like, how do you know what cities are going to be problems? So 
certainly will do another series uh, on this game. And the but but this game is still an alpha as well. I will will mention that too. So if if we were saying what would I enjoy seeing in this game um, moving forward, I would say um, where are we? Things that I would really like to see in this game. Not gonna build anything more for that guy. It's going to be really expensive at this point. So Jakarta's coming through him. Oh, that's right, because Jakarta goes to Myanmar. Dhaka. So we need to get someone else on this route. Um, what I would like to see in this game um, would be... It's near Mars. Chattagram. So that's also this way. So let's really try and up those planes. Um, what I would like to see is, I reckon, a little list down here that will tell you things like exclamation marks. So it might have an exclamation mark and then the name of a city, like, say, Munich, for example, just to say basically the same as what an exclamation mark means on the map, just to say, hey, you haven't attached this city to anything yet. Or possibly, um, I think someone suggested in, this, in the comments too, that it has a list down there that says, um, these are the, this is the city with the, currently the most amount of passengers on the, on the map. So say there are, there are currently 5,000 people attempting to get to Jakarta. And so you can go, oh, okay, well, how can we address that? Um, I think that, yeah, there's a little bit more interface that um, could be on there that could be neat. There's just still, still both ways. So and that's getting expensive for our planes on here. They're all the same level. Let's just go one major jet. See if that helps out. Um. The other thing, I think the other feedback that um, that people have had in the comments is that Crimea does exist. It hasn't just disappeared into the sea. Um, I realize that it could potentially, the game could consider it a hot topic of saying whether uh, they think that Crimea is part of Russia or part of Ukraine. Just put it on the map as white. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Look it up on Wikipedia. What What is legally... What owns um, is, is Crimea considered part of UK, uh, Ukraine? And done. Like, don't worry about it. I don't think Russia will come after you. Um, I mean, the other notes you can see, it, it does actually almost make you more aware that the game is trying to avoid controversy. Um, and I, I'd say you can notice that by how many Chinese cities we've got, but we don't have Hong Kong. We do have Shenzhen just across the border from Hong Kong, but not Hong Kong. Um, I mean, we don't have anything in Tibet at, at all either. But again, that's probably not a big deal. If you were building, if you were going for the 100 biggest cities in China, I would imagine that Lhasa, Tibet isn't one of them. So um, so not, not necessarily a big problem. I wouldn't expect it to be in there anyway. Uh, and then the other one is... Taiwan is not part of China. This is its own country. If you want to get technical, the name of Taiwan is actually uh, the Republic of China, which is a quite a funny thing <laughs> that they're named after. Um, they're actually uh, they've like almost spitefully called themselves the exact same thing as the other um, their opposing country in China. I mean, you even may notice it in the in the Olympics, China, uh, Taiwan's in there as Chinese Taipei, so that China doesn't get angry. When the uh, my my brief history of China, when the Kuomintang, I think their name was, uh, fled China after World War II, they went to to Taiwan. I think Kuomintang is still. I, I'm now I'm not sure if I'm mixing that up. If Kuomintang is the name of the guy who led the the party, or if the party was called Kuomintang. It's been a while since I wrote a book on that. Um, 
but they went to Taiwan. And so sort of the, the last aspects of the sort of governments before the Communist Party took over fled there. But they are very much their own country. That's That, that again isn't up for debate. This isn't Hong Kong or, or Tibet where you can potentially have an opinion that is that they shouldn't be part of China. But, but, but Taiwan is a fact. It's not part of China, but that's all right. Anyway, those are the those are the big ones that have both been pointed out in the comments, and uh, and I guess I noticed as well. If you've noticed anything else, um, feel free to mention it. I can't remember. I, I'm trying to think of what the newest country in the world is in in terms of um, whether it appears on here. You see, we've even got East Timor over here, which is pretty new. I'm pretty sure South Sudan is a very new country as well, but. I don't think it's the newest. Okay, so and a lot of this is all this line here, so we're gonna have to keep spending money to try and keep us alive, because otherwise Beijing will buckle. That's not the worst thing to have, because hopefully it means that I can just get some quick money and, and a huge amount of people go into go into Munich. It's definitely central to my plans. Now we don't really want to upgrade Beijing. It looks very expensive. Uh, and we certainly don't want to have to spend too much money doing anything else because we've only got a minute 30 to get Lithuania on the map. Let's slow things down. Let's just let's get over there. Just make the for oh, Minsk has gotten a few upgrades just then, so we can just go by there. Yeah, so anything that was is is currently exclamated, something that's currently your double, uh, like there's more people heading there, mention them on this side. Anything that's currently closed, mention it over there, just so you can just see what um, you're a bit a bit more aware. Because sometimes you're working on something and you go like, oh, okay, there's a banner down the bottom. I've got to address that in a second. Then by the time you start to move down there, that banner's gone. Um, does make life certainly difficult. So continue to upgrade these planes because this is now a major problem that we're getting. But again, it's whether we've got the the amount of money that we can actually afford to to keep doing this. The other problem will be that all of this is going to then, if we start to increase this too much, we're actually going to put an even bigger pinch on uh, this guy here, who also needs to get it. And you can see that his major one is Ho Chi Minh City, which means that if we then improve on this guy, uh, we need to improve on this one because he's going to have to start shifting guys further south. Now it means that we've got five minutes to, to get enough for Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan, hopefully that's right. Which is going to be a real stress if Beijing is going to buckle on us. Because all of those major ones are now in the south. I mean, what we could do is we could shift Hanoi to connect to Wuhan. Wuhan's become a lot more of a, a cool customer. It would mean that we can at least divide that. But you can sort of see that it's just, it's almost just the flavor of the month. Like Jakarta's now completely gone quiet, even though it was a major problem before. It's just the new, the new ones are now what um, needs addressing. So we'll try and just make these. No way can we afford something like that. Just continue to get more and more Chinese cities. Like I said, I would have hoped that um, the amount of Chinese cities we have would just allow us to sort of like, you get so much money domestically. You can see that all of these guys are basically, the, a lot of them just want to go local. 
and sort of suddenly change there. Um, but you would hope that that's sort of where you're making your money. So is your strategy, if you're trying to get a big score here, is that you just go through and, and pick those, um, those major cities. Okay, so we're going to come right down to the wire here for Kyrgyzstan. But at least in that sort of period, we did have to spend a bit of money um, trying to, to sort of make Beijing happy. But still not really. Keep it done. Okay. All Chinese cities. Again, have to just cater to. So what I'll try and do is just see if I can uh, go around and sell some things. Now this guy here, I don't think that we need, we really need these lines anymore. I think that my Bamako, unless we have the horrific situation again of Bamako getting locked down, I think that all of those guys don't actually need the alternate routes. It's just a nice little surge of money for us. But what we're basically looking for now is ways that we can have money to avoid just sinking. And just sort of we can push as just as far as possible. Even little little routes that we can see that might have more planes than they need. Probably actually be China, where I just was in the habit of just creating three Three planes per line. There's a lot of stuff moving on these. Even the very little ones. So I hope Sierra Leone was not the one that was... <laughs> that's Mali, that's my center one, so that shouldn't cause too much of a problem. So that guy, I mean, I realize these are only $100. But especially these planes that I've got that are just sitting right behind another plane. They're definitely never going to be doing anything. I wonder what happens to the passengers when I sell a plane. I must bounce back to the, the previous town, I assume. All right, Sudan, Sudan, sorry. All right, we'll get them connecting in this way for a very expensive price. How much would it cost to get them north to Cairo? Much cheaper. Get back to where I was. Now that's an interesting one that we've now got next. Um, Venezuela. So that means that we're going to be uh, our um, our route across the Atlantic about to escalate. We don't actually even share a border. Those two. It must be more that Venezuela's deemed to share a border with something else. I would say that part of this Afri Africa here. Now, I guess looking at this map here, it looks a bit odd in how big Africa is versus how small Europe is. I think that the design of this map is considered a more accurate style of the world, that Africa is significantly bigger than um, Okay, Tunisia. Where is Tunisia? Well, I guess I just put them for me. Um, and the reason that that is, I believe, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, is that that the 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 more common map in the um, 
that, that you know where you sort of generally see a much larger Europe, much smaller Africa. I think it was designed by someone who had the Pope say, oh, no, we want the we want the Christian part of the world to be bigger. And so Europe and sort of which is, I mean, it was where the Pope was making the call, which is why it was a Christian was the aspect. But it was basically whoever made those maps at that point was, well, we want us to be the biggest thing on this map. We want to be seen as more significant. So, um, so Europe just came off as bigger on those maps. And it just happens to be the one that's still most famously kept. All right, now this is feels like this could cause a pinch. Um, at least Bamako is already a sizable airport because I'd imagine that this we're going to have a, a sudden surge of people wanting to go to Venezuela. Now I don't know how how busy it's going to consider Venezuela to be, uh, but I would imagine that. The answer is going to be significant. Just as in terms of like it's bigger than Suriname. So, so this guy that's just sort of been able to cruise along with these tiny little planes doing this transatlantic flight might see just get a bit, a bit more significant. I'd actually say that at the moment we're doing pretty well. Um, my pessimism that we were going to crash and burn hasn't come to fruition. And I would say, let's give it some time. I'm sure, we'll, we'll get there. But so far, we're doing all right. And I don't know if it is just that we've we've survived the the surge of the um, these major cities in the east, and it's suddenly sort of pulled us back central. And now uh, we had Nigeria over here, and we can see that these guys are feeling a bit of the burn there. So again, it's just a country that's at the end of the line. It's not going to affect anyone else. And see, I missed clicking on that down there. So I don't know where that, that city came up. Russia is feeling the pinch too. Now, obviously, Russia is the, the waypoint for everything over here. So it's it's doing pretty well, as is. Um, all things considered. So the other thing... I, I did have someone mention that... Um, you could consider like having some whoop, I can at least afford it I just haven't got to it um, you could consider putting in some major routes like you actually have a route that goes um, Berlin to well, in this example say Berlin to Wuhan because that's probably the most central point down the bottom or even to Myanmar now I think that um there's a problem, the, the the potential problem that you would have with that is that the, um, oh, the Chinese city. This is probably showing as well that might have been better off having more Chinese um, waypoints. But the, um, just the one, or sorry, even just the two cities that I've got in there might not be enough. Let's have a look at how Moscow is going. So darker is currently what's causing it grief. But not really too much we can do short of upgrading it. I mean, we could have an alternate second route going from Moscow to, say, Myanmar, but I'd imagine that that would set us back a fair bit of money. $27,000. that's more than we can handle. I mean, even the idea of upgrading it's potentially more than we can handle three minutes to go to get South Sudan, which... Oh, there we go. Yeah, if there was something in the game that actually did identify what it considers a major city, like I realize it has a nice little circle around a circle to identify capital cities, Capitals aren't necessarily that important. I mean, I'd say free capital city, if you want, have a circle with a crown sitting on it. The important cities, like for major cities, have a ring around them. For extremely major cities, have two rings around them or something. Have a, 
have some sort of system that does do a, a good job of identifying this is what we consider a this is what we're defining as a busy city okay so now we're down to 40 seconds left to unlock sudan and we don't have anywhere near enough money we're going to need 44,000 and we currently have 20,000 so have a quick look to see if there's any options that we can do here anything that we can sort of cut routes I mean if we could cut that but then that'll put a pinch a bit more on Rome but I mean we're gonna run out of time anyway there we go the end of my my run and we can see eight 8 million passengers just make it feel like we really did do a fair bit there. 1,795, new personal best. And I need to complete, you get bonus points without ever saving. I wonder what sort of, you'd be going for a few hours, I guess, if you wanted to do that. Uh, and I guess that shows us there, we got 75 countries was um, how many we eventually got through there. So, very fun game. They, this definitely isn't the end for me. What I'm going to um do now is wait until they do update the the unlock all countries mode and then have another crack at it because i think that the the that last part stopped being as fun because it gave me no room to sort of like try and build an infrastructure that could potentially survive and last the whole world it was really just very reactionary at the, at the end so uh, you can see down here this is our current version 0.2.409 uh, and i eagerly await that update and Thank you all for watching this series. I, there have been plenty of people that have come on and just um, given obviously very kind words and watched it. Um, and I will be back. So watch this space. Until next time, catch you later. See ya.